Okay, next we're going to be taking a look at planning investigations and some of the things that go along with understanding how to plan strong investigations. In general, a plan is like a recipe, like when you follow a recipe to cook your favorite dish uh, inside the plan. Uh, we should be able to understand what kind of equipment is going to be used, what types of materials are going to be used, and how we're going to actually use them. Um, in your plan, you have to give some instructions about how you're going to collect data or stuff that's going to be used to help you answer your question. So measurements made in an, in an investigation are called data. Here's a small raw data table that you might you know, scribble on a piece of paper and then later put it into a chart for easier understanding. Notice the basic things are here. Uh, you should have a title, a better title. This shouldn't just say data table. Maybe it should say something like table showing how the height is affected by the time. I've got the time here, I've got the height, whatever your independent and dependent variables are. I've also got the units and I've got the numbers and the numbers are recorded to the same number of decimal places for easy communication. This is important, uh, the words accuracy and precision, to be accurate and precise. And sorry, my writing here isn't very clear. Accurate says close to the actual value. Precise means repeat measurements are close together. So we're going to see that in more detail over here. And there's a little diagram that I'll show in a second. Um, uh, let's just go forward a little bit so you can see. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so you can take a look. This diagram here with the rest of this information as well. So let me go back a bit. Accurate data is data that you collect that is close to the true value of what you're trying to measure. So for example, if I have a iPhone in front of me and I'm trying to measure the length of the iPhone. The iPhone has a true actual length and when you're measuring it with a ruler and then your friend measures it with a ruler and then Billy Bob measures it with a ruler, you all might end up with slightly different numbers because of the way that you set up the ruler or how you lined it up. But we want to try to get as close to the actual value. So one of you, you or your friend or Billy Bob, if one of you is better at doing the actual measurements, you might get a measurement that's more accurate than, than your friend or Billy Bob. So that's what accuracy is. So accuracy is trying to hit the target and getting the actual uh, value, the actual value of the measurement you're trying to make. Precision or having precise data means each time you repeat the measurement, the measurement is very similar. So if you are dropping a, I don't know, a little umbrella type device that you've made, each time you drop it, it'll take a certain amount of time for it to fall down. When you repeat that measurement from the, with the exact same variables, when you drop it again, if the time it takes is very similar to the previous one, then you're being really precise. If each time you drop it, you end up with totally different numbers, then it means you're not being very precise. It means you're probably not controlling the variables carefully, like you're dropping them from different heights. You, you start here, then you drop it. The next time you drop it from a little bit higher, it means you're not keeping the controlled variables very um, well controlled and so you end up with imprecise data. And so these four targets kind of show you what that means. So this is showing high accuracy with high precision. So each repeat, uh, repeat trials very close to the previous one and you're actually getting really close to the actual value of the measurement. Here you have high precision. Each time you redo it, you're getting a very similar number, but every time you're measuring, you're actually off by a bit because you're setting up the ruler incorrectly. And so you end up with low accuracy, but high precision. And then these two will give you uh, another idea. This is low precision, but high accuracy. So you're getting close to the actual value, but each time you repeat it, uh, you're getting a slightly different measurement. And this is the worst case scenario. Uh, all your numbers are different, so you're, you're being very or with your repeat measurements, so low precision, and none of them are actually close to the actual value. So this is the situation you definitely want to avoid, but all of them are worth talking about. The spread of sets of repeat data is small if precise data is collected. So if you look at, if this is a little graph, if this is your average point, and this is the highest point, and this is the lowest point from your, from your data set, for example. So let's say this is your data set. You plot the average, 
and then you end up with the maximum and the minimum. So I can see that for this measurement, there was less precision than, for example, this precision, this measurement, because there's less of a spread. More spread here, less spread here. Less precise, more precise. And you can talk about that in your evaluation as well, too. And one more thing to take a look at, to think about, is something called uncertainty. And uncertainty is related to accuracy as well, too, because when you're using a ruler and you're saying, oh, I think it's 2.1 centimeters or 21 millimeters, it could actually be a little higher than 21, but you just can't tell because our eyes are not that good and we're not able to see that small. So those are some of the numbers that you need to think about as well when you're uh, recording it. So that is called uncertainty. Some other things to look at, when the same investigation is repeated several times, the data should be similar and therefore repeatable. So we've talked about that a little bit. So a lot of R words here. If other groups do the same investigation, they should be able to get, they should say they, they should get data that is similar or reproducible. So repeatable means every time you do the experiment, you're getting similar results. So that's precision. And uh, if another group is able to do the experiment, they should get data that is similar as well. It needs to be reproducible as well. And scientists need to be very good about their methods so that when another scientist looks at their method and tries to do the same experiment, they should be able to reproduce the results. If no one else can reproduce your results, then it becomes very suspicious. And now everyone's like, okay, uh, maybe you didn't really do good science or even worse, maybe you're making up the results to try and get a result that might make you famous or make you make money or give you uh, fame. You know, everybody wants to be famous, but you can't do it by cheating. And so that's where science is important because people are required to check each other's work to make sure you didn't just make it all up. Okay, uh, types of data. We've looked at this. If you're making a measurement like length uh, or mass, the, this is called continuous data, and it's, quant it's quantitative, right? And it's, uh, you can measure it on a ruler, and you can get values like 1.5 or 1.55, or if you're using a very sensitive scale, you might see 1.546. That's called continuous data. It can have any value, and length, temperature are these kinds of examples. Another type of data is discrete. This is also quantitative, but can only have whole number values. So for example, if you're saying counting the number of frogs that you can fit in a room before Mr. Lee starts to scream, then uh, you can only have whole number of frogs, like one frog or two frog or three frogs. It wouldn't make sense to have 10.5 frogs. Actually, that would probably make me scream worse because I would see 10 frogs and then half a frog and the half a frog would be pretty frightening. But anyways, I think you understand what I'm saying. If you can only count whole number values, then it's called discrete data. And then finally, categoric data is qualitative data so not quantitative so categories colors like red brown green blue you would have to plot on a bar chart or cold hot warm not really quantifiable things a better thing to do would be to use temperature but because you're using these these words cold and warm to describe things um, it's considered categoric and you can't plot a quantitative graph Okay, how many measurements should you be taking uh, in your plan? This is what you need to think about. If you're doing something that you need just a small range of data, so this word right here, range, is the spread of data that you'd like to actually include. So if it's temperatures, then for example, are you gonna record from zero, from freezing temperatures all the way to boiling? Or are you only interested in temperatures between say 15 and 25? So you need to think about what's the appropriate range of data that you wanna collect. So for your independent variable, if you're dropping rotor motors or something like that, and you're looking at the length of the wings, what's an appropriate level of uh, range for the length of the wings? Do you go from four centimeters to 10 centimeters, or do you need to go all the way from one centimeter all the way up to 1,000 centimeters? So obviously uh, you have to 
choose a range that's more appropriate for the experiment you're looking at and how many diff of those different temperatures need to be tested or how many of those different lengths so between one and 50 centimeters do you need to record one centimeter and then two and then three do you have enough time to do that is it going to be more useful to just do for example one and then five and then 10 and then 15 uh, to give you an idea of how to answer your research question and then finally you need to be able to include something called a risk assessment so any kind of investigation that you're planning is there a likelihood of damage or harm to the people who are conducting the experiment? Or if you're doing experiments with live organisms like cockroaches or worms or slugs or crickets, is what you're doing actually ethical and morally sound? Is it bad? Are you going to be harming these things? Can you use them for the experiments and then put them back into the environment? That would be ideal, of course. So a risk assessment or using anything dangerous in the lab like fire or knives or scalpels or any kind of thing if you're doing a dissection. So you need to mention something about the risk assessment. So very last slide here for this video, uh, a plan should include the scientific question you're trying to answer, the variables, the independent and dependent variables, a list of variables and how to control them. So after you've written down the controlled variables, next to them you should say about how you're going to actually control them why do you need to control them what could happen if you don't control them because they may likely affect the outcome of your experiment a prediction of what you think will happen and why a list of all the equipment you need and we mentioned a risk assessment and how will you use the equipment to collect accurate and precise data so a very carefully um, created plan should be able to be carried out by other scientists or other students in the classroom to try and produce results that are reproducible. Someone else must be able to follow your instructions and be able to do the same thing as well too. So here's just a little thing you can try on the side if you have time. So thinking about what kind of, uh, how you would write a plan for this kind of simple little investigation. Alrighty.